Welcome guys, how are you doing? I hope you're all well. So this is a little bit of a different episode. Today we're going to check out this Data Color Spider X Pro Monitor Calibration Tool. So this is made for people who are doing maybe photography and videography and you need your monitors to be you know accurate colors because you don't want this to look good on your monitor and then go somewhere else and then see it on someone else's screen and it's completely different and looks completely different because the colors of the monitors have been different now this is not the full review but the intended purpose of this is to show you like how this is actually done okay and i wanted to do it with you because i haven't done yet i've only opened this box up to see what's inside but we're gonna do it together and see how easy it actually is for someone who's like do you know what i need my monitors to be calibrated how easy is this process? So we're gonna check it out. And here, I've got actually a perfect solution or perfect kind of test how we can test it. I've got a Dell monitor over here, there's a Samsung over there and a BenQ over there. Neither of them are really good monitors, like really good professional, yeah, really good monitors that color accurate and everything. They're just completely average apps. This I bought even used, this I got used, and then this I have bought myself but this is not the best monitor out there. And I have taken a picture before already, like seeing how different the colors are. And even just with my eyes over here, I can see that this is much more magenta. This is so much more green tint over there. And then this is somewhere in the middle, but a bit more magenta than this. The brightness is all over the place. So let's see how we can do it. Inside the box over here, by the way, I'm checking over here that it costs roughly around $150 or 100 pounds. So that is great because you can always calibrate your monitors and that is good. If you want to check it out, I'm going to leave the link in the description. So download your software at go to datacolor.com, get spider X. We have this little like download the thing on over there where you can download it. Okay. And then inside here, we have this little calibration tool. There's a serial number on the bottom over there, uh, which I'm not gonna show you, but um, basically this is it over here. You know, you open it up, there's a little bit inside, but let's go download the software and then see how we go. Okay. Okay, here we are. Yeah, sure, fine, I'll accept. Warm up monitor at least 30 minutes yes it has been on around 30 minutes download and install and activate software okay spider x pro i think this is pro right spider x pro yes windows software okay i can see that the download the software has been finished so okay let's go press okay here we go okay we're gonna go english Okay, we're gonna go next, 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 next. Please plug in the Spider before launching Spider X Pro. Uh, we go next. So let's plug it in over here. Plug it in over here. We've got it plugged in. Anything happening over here? Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, and then Spider X Pro, they made a shortcut on the desktop. Let's open this up. Welcome to Spider X Pro software. Okay. Okay. It has been plugged in. Let's see. Enter your serial number. Okay. I'm going to do that now. So next is asking for my name and some of the details to activate the software. There is a license code on the screen at the moment that it, uh, basically you need to copy somewhere and save somewhere just in case if you need to uninstall the software and put it back on on the computer um, you just kind of need that code so it says to save it somewhere so I've saved it somewhere. I'm going to press uh, finish. Would you like the application to automatically check for updates? Yes, might as well. Are you willing to share calibration data or error measures using the pro? Yes, Spider X. Okay, there we go. Have you allowed the display to warm up for half an hour? Yes, I have. Lighting up. Have you checked the no intense light is falling directly on your display screen? Um, no, not really. Let me just fiddle this light around a little bit so it's not like falling directly onto the screen. Okay. Um, display controls. Have you reset your monitor settings? 
reset contrast the default set is set temperature control to equivalent okay let's have a look what do we have um brightness contrast okay let's see what else we have factory yeah do you know what? i'm gonna do factory reset all settings yes okay this is factory the color temperature is 60 5,000 kelvins. Adjust the brightness level at which you are comfortable. Yeah, I guess that's it. Computer part turned into a hobo keyboard. Yeah, okay, that's completed. Uh, and then we're gonna go next. So whenever you change these monitors over here, when you press it to two or one, because I've got three monitors set up, it's gonna jump into that monitor so you know which one is, which one is which. So this one three, I'm gonna call this one Dell. This is Samsung and jump to that one and then this one BenQ. Okay, but we're gonna wanna go to Dell. Next, um, is it a desktop? Yes, it is desktop. Next, display manufacturer Dell. Enter the desktop display model. I went to properties on the display settings and I could see the model number, um, which is, let's have a look, 312H. Okay, let's go next. Indicate which controls does your display offer? Brightness, yes, Kelvin, no. I don't have any Kelvin presets. I think it's standard LED. Yeah, standard, it's not general, it's standard LD. Okay, um, hoping this is right. Let's go next to use the new room light switching feature. Okay, so we're gonna look for a full calibration. Okay, and then uh, let's go. Make sure that you have no intense light falling on directly. Okay, there is none, no intense light. Stay at your computer after you click next button on the screen, the application will Take a few measurements to wait for your adjustment brightness. So after the brightness is out, the application will continue the calibration. Okay. Raise the spider here. Okay. You can pull this back a little bit. Um, once you click next, the calibration will begin. Okay, let's click next. See what happens. Okay. flashing all sorts of colors through here now. Okay, look at the target current values, adjust the brightness control on your monitor either up or down to make sure the current value matches the target value, continue within 4% of the value. So what we have to do now is go on to the monitor brightness and contrast. And then are we on the brightness? Yes, let's move it up a little bit. And then let's check update. Okay, we're still not there yet. Okay, we're in max brightness update. Okay, we're not even close. Let's see if it's changed. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I had to adjust the contrast as well, which is weird. That adjusts the brightness as well for some reason. Okay, brightness is 100% and contrast is 92. Okay, we're within the in, within the range. And then let's press continue. Almost done, almost done, there we go. Please remove your spider and click finish. Okay, let's click finish over here. Let's put the lens cap back on. And let's have a look at the differences now than in here. Wow, what a difference. So it's supposed to be so much more, I think this is magenta at the moment supposed to be so much more greener I can see it's so much more greener I don't know if you can see this on camera but there's a massive difference here uncalibrated and calibrated uncalibrated calibrated well let's go next compare to sRGB oh that's pretty good so look the red ones are pretty accurate the blue is pretty accurate the green is a little bit off RGB 96% of sRGB that's pretty good okay we're gonna go calibrate another monitor
Samsung. Okay, the green is a little bit more of 96. Calibrate another display. We're gonna do the... Whoa, okay, that's quite a lot. Uncalibrated, calibrated. There's so much more matching. So as I can see, this monitor here is the worst monitor over here because I can see that the sRGB is 91% sRGB. I think this was 95 and this was 96, so that's the best second, third, um, but I know that. What I wanna do now is like have before and after pictures here up on the screen so we can have a look if it's been all right and what's the difference you see okay i can see a massive difference on the left monitor over here on taking a picture over here okay so this one over here so if we zoom in so if we're looking at these over here this is so much more magenta and this is so much more like green and i can see these two much much back better over here obviously um there is much worse viewing angles of this monitor over here but actually they left the benq monitor is so much more closer to this one over there so now if we if you just look at the whites on this one over here i can still see that there is a bit of a difference okay first of all it looks this is before and this is after it looks a little bit more warmer a little bit more greener uh, which means we had this one too magenta so let's have a look at this bottom monitor over there as well so as we can see it's much more brighter than before because uh, my camera settings have been exactly the same and then as you can see it's just like about an hour apart they look a little bit different as well so i can't see the difference actually that's good so to end this video what would i say how easy was it to calibrate my screens with this spider x data column so first of all what i would say is it is very easy to do i just followed all the on-screen instructions it took quite fast so at the time of I'm filming this and it's taken me an hour to do three monitors, but I had never done anything before. So I was reading the instructions. So if I was doing this now, for example, monthly calibration, it would only take me probably like 15 minutes maybe to do the whole calibration of everything. One thing that I found a little bit hard was to decide which LED type was my monitors because I, it wasn't very easy to find this information online whether it was wide standard or generic or some other option so i've kind of like guessed what they are which is you know i guess what everyone has to do but in my case i probably had like the worst case scenario where they're completely different monitors which you don't want to do in an ideal world anyway if you're doing proper professional uh, you know video work or photo work then you should have the same monitors, um, you know, if you have a multi-monitor setup because you don't want different types of colors going through, which I have here at the moment. But I can see that the colors are so much more matching than before, but I can still see that they're not ideally matched. It's probably because they're different manufacturer monitors there's different technologies inside so you can't then get 100 percent to match but there's so much more matching than ever before and when you flick through the next you know see the calibrated and uncalibrated view after i've calibrated this on the spider x program you could see that wow there's a big difference between you know what i saw before and what i see now so that is really really cool so how does it work does it work great absolutely it does is it easy to use i mean it was easy to use the only thing that i would say is just I really struggled to find which LED backlight it was. So that's it really. So maybe you are like me, you're running some kind of cheap monitors and you want to get your monitors as good or as accurate as possible. And you don't want to spend like another 600 or 700 to get like some kind of entry, you know, professional color monitor or editing monitor, then this is a pretty good tool actually. It's about 100 pounds and 150 dollars. And for this, you can get like a lifetime license on your computer. Whatever monitors you put on, you can always get them calibrated, always calibrate them, which is, which is very awesome. So what else can I say? If you want your monitors calibrated, check this out in the description below. I'll see you next time. If you have any other questions, comment below and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys for watching. Adios.